How to Build a Rocket Scientist. I'm Jane Platt, and you're listening to a podcast from JPL, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. First of all, what exactly is a rocket scientist? A rocket scientist, somebody who works on rockets, sends them to Mars and wherever. Someone who builds rockets as a hobby and for work. NASA. Um, just someone that's really smart. Somebody who is really bright and kind of out there. <laughs> it might surprise you to learn that there really is no such thing as a rocket scientist. There are rocket engineers and there are scientists. But since everyone knows the term rocket scientist, we'll go ahead and use it generically. We're going to talk with a JPL rocket scientist, two student rocket scientists under construction, and we'll find out how JPL's education office can help parents and teachers build their own rocket scientists. I loved science, but I didn't pursue science in school because I thought I was too dumb to do it. I didn't like math. I wasn't good at math. I hated math. I cried when I had to take a math test. You would never guess those words are being spoken by Dr. Pan Conrad, the head of JPL's astrobiology unit. She calls it the science of everything to do with life in the universe. Scared of math and science, the little girl Pan studied music instead. She became an opera singer, joined a rock band, a country band, became a composer, then a video producer, but always gnawing inside of her a love of science. So I went back to college and I just decided to gut it out, do the math, stop the crying, and get a degree in science. And I picked geology because I just loved crystals and minerals and thinking about the stories that the earth can tell us about itself. And in order to do space, I figured if I knew the planet I lived on really well, maybe somebody would let me study another one. At JPL, she not only studies other planets, she tries to figure out if anything could live there. I study what's called habitability, that is, what makes some environments hospitable for life and other environments not. And I'm catching you now as we speak, literally, you are packing for a trip, but it's not a typical summer vacation. It's actually work, and you are going where? <laughs> You've caught me with all these big rubber action packers on the floor of my office where I'm packing up for an expedition to the Arctic. And we're going to do some really cool things there. We're going to test out a rover which can actually climb on the side of a cliff. And we're going to test out some fancy life detection instruments and see how well we can identify life when it's sparsely distributed in rocks and in soil. Conrad's Arctic team includes Ellen Haryu, a rocket scientist under construction. She's a University of Washington student spending her fourth summer at JPL on a fellowship. How many other students can say that they're celebrating their 21st birthday in the Arctic? Ellen, like Pan Conrad, loved science as a young child. Some of my earliest toys were a space shuttle along with my Barbies and my cars, so I've always had an interest in space probably because of my dad's influence. Ellen followed her childhood interest, but Pan Conrad says many girls don't. A lot of girls don't go into science and technology because they're afraid they won't get a boyfriend. That is just ridiculous because science rocks and brainy girls rule and you'll still get a boyfriend, so don't worry about such silly things. But even lots of boys think rocket science is not for them. I guess as a student, you always hear about what NASA does and space missions and you look up and you know see space and think about it, but it just seems like it's so far away or so out of reach that how can you, you know, just one student or one kid... Uh, ever hope to have the cool job of actually building spacecraft and launching stuff. Brian Schratz, a Penn State grad, is also a rocket scientist under construction. He's at JPL this summer working on a proposed Mars lander. He 